On today's Locked on Jayhawks, Kansas lands a five-star recruit, the number one center in the class of 2024, Flory Badunga. We going with Flory Flush or are we going Badunga Dunks? We're going to talk about that and plenty more on today's edition of Locked on Jayhawks. You are Locked on Jayhawks, your daily podcast on the Kansas Jayhawks, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Derek Johnson. You can hear me as well Monday through Friday from 3 to 6 p.m. on KLWN in Lawrence with Rock Chalk Sports Talk. Thanks for making Locked on Jayhawks your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. You can also find us on our YouTube page where you can like and subscribe to the show. We've got a new website with uh, Locked on, just our, our overall network where you can catch everything, including Locked on Jayhawks. That uh, I highly recommend you can watch everything. You can you know find stories, articles, other podcasts. So that's really cool that we have that up now. Uh, thank you to all the everydayers out there tuning into this thing every day. Uh, I was just on vacation. I just got back. So I'm actually recording this Tuesday night. We're going to put this thing up. Um, I wish I could have brought this to you after the Flory Badunga news happened on Saturday night. But we'll get into the KU football renovation stuff because that's big today too on tomorrow morning's episode. So you'll have a lot to catch up on here with Locked On Jayhawks. But we're going to start here. Flory Badunga. Picks KU. Um, I I mean, the name is just great. You have a, a center named Badunga. Uh, that's kind of been a, a fun conversation. Uh, saying the word Flory Flush, like when he has a dunk, that's just clean. It's sharp. It sounds cool. Badunga Dunk is amazing. Please, somebody in Lawrence who does like apparel, does some sort of apparel company, please make t-shirts that say Badunga Dunk on it with him dunking, NIL deal, please. I will buy all the t-shirts, all the t-shirts possible. Um, so he's a five-star recruit, and he's the number one center in the class. Uh, everywhere you look, at least, you know, rivals, he's number five. On three, he's number five. 24-7, he's number five in the class overall. Obviously, the 2024 class is not being seen as, as that great of class overall, but still this is a five-star kid who is going to come on, come in with obvious expectations or potential to be a possible one-and-done level player. The recruitment was an interesting one. This kid who you know didn't start playing basketball until more recently, and he kind of blew up summer in the summer of 2022. Highly recommend checking out. There's a really good piece from CJ Moore in the athletic kind of detailing how this all happened and how he blew up and um, talking to, you know, some of his, his coaches and stuff and, and how everything went to that. So he basically rose up the rankings and then this off season, um, you know, his, his final four eventually came down to Duke, Auburn, Michigan, and Kansas. And I love the recruitments where you don't actually know what's going to happen. You know, we're, we're in a day and age now where you really will see a lot of times the recruitment, you know what's going to happen because you see these crystal ball picks or on three predictions or, you know, rivals uh, forecast predictions about where the kid's going to go. And a lot of times those end up being true, uh, whether it's, you know, the, the insider information has gotten there or you have certain insiders who know and they don't put the info out there until they fully know and they put it right. Like very rarely nowadays do we actually get are those predictions more so guesses. A lot of times it is like they know the information. And so a lot of times you end up with like I love back in the day when you wouldn't know what's going to happen. And you'd watch the kids recruitment and you'd put on the hat or you'd put on the T-shirt or whatever it was. And there was that level of surprise. It made recruiting, I think, even more fun when you got the kid because it was a real celebration thing as opposed to just, oh, OK, it looks like he's going to pick them. We'll just I'll just wait for the you know notification to come across my phone or the you know something to come across the ticker on Sports Center. You didn't know where this one was going to go. Nobody knew. It was a very quiet recruitment, and you heard all along that KU was really pressing on it. You would hear that Bill Self was out to see him again, and that you know it was clear that they were putting a lot of attention into him and that they really liked the kid. It was also interesting that Kansas was the only Adidas school here, right? That maybe that gave you an edge up. But then again, there were a lot of people being like, ah, I don't know. I feel like this is a Duke thing. I feel like Duke is the heavy favorite in this race. Uh, maybe not heavy favorite, but it was it was them in Kansas, and maybe they had the slight edge. Then kind of leading into his decision day between Friday to Saturday, it felt like the Auburn hype really picked up, that people were saying he's going to pick Auburn. And you also had the fact that it was at the Under Armour, like All-American, or not All-American, whatever, uh, some sort of Under Armour basketball event. And Auburn was the one Under Armour school of the schools. Michigan's Jordan brand, Duke's Jordan brand, or Nike, whatever. Uh, Kansas is Adidas, and then Auburn was Under Armour. So it was like, oh, well, maybe that just makes sense. Ends up picking Kansas. And I think that only adds to the recruitment and makes this even more fun. He's a center in the class of 2024, six foot eight, 
Uh, 215 pounds with 24 seven. He's six foot nine, 220 on rivals, six, nine, 215 with on three. So six, eight, six, nine, 215, 220, somewhere in that range. Five star number five in all those rankings, number five on the 24 seven sports composite. He began playing basketball back in 2019. So this is only four years, at least of organized basketball. And he really broke out last summer. Um, he was the Indiana state Gatorade player of the year this season. He averaged 20 points. 14 rebounds, four and a half blocks, and he shot, this, this is my favorite, 81% from the field. Very different body type than Yudoka Azabuki. Azabuki was seven feet. He was a mammoth of a man, 270 pounds maybe. Um, Flory's only 215, 220, only 6'8", six, 6'9". Six, but the efficiency, he is just a dunking behemoth, and he has all sorts of athleticism, which you can see why that would happen, especially when you're playing against, you know, maybe a lot of, smaller kids you're not going up against you know six foot ten every game uh so this is the uh scouting report from on three jamie shaw wrote this he's a physical specimen he has long arms broad shoulders and a lot of burst excellent shot blocker both on ball and from the weak side uh he's got good timing there uh, he also runs the floor quickly and purposely. He can push the break with his handle, but does not get too deep and out of control. You'll actually, if you watch some of the video highlights, you'll see times where he gets steals and he handles it. He puts it between his legs or behind his back and takes it all the way to the rim. Now, Bill Soft's not going to ask of him to do that or want him to do that because you're going to have other better options to do that on the floor. But having just another player when you want to be a fast athletic team and run the floor hard and you know play in transition play, to have that ability at all, like that's uh, just a plus that you have with the center, obviously. Um, more from, from the scouting report. Uh, the jump shot extends out to about 10 feet, so we'd like to see him working on stretching out, that out some. But he has touch as a roll man to finish with floaters and short corner jumpers. He needs to improve his free throws as he gets the line a lot. I think his free throw percentage around 56%. Uh, offensively, Badunga has a good IQ. He's smart in dribble handoffs, can post wide and deep on the block. If help comes, he finds the open man, delivers a good pass. He's a good offensive rebounder. He is left-hand reliant, but his IQ and explosion allow him to get away with that for now. Physically, he is like a college upperclassman and is already one of the premier explosive athletes in high school basketball, which is interesting because it, it's 6'8", 6'9", 215. For him to be explosive already and, and be like an upperclassman in that way that means that if you can add 10 15 20 pounds to him imagine what that's going to do he's going to be a terror on opposing teams what he can bring to the table overall though you look through that that scouting report i'm going to say two names of guys that went to ku that were five-star centers that is going to scare you a little bit and i don't mean that to be the intention because i do want to get more into this conversation here but ku has had over the last decade with bill self a couple of other five-star centers who were both not just five-star centers, they were top 10 recruits. They were, gosh, I, I don't remember where one of these was. He might've just been just outside the top five. He might've been like six or seven, but both like top seven recruits in the country. Shaq Diallo, Cliff Alexander, both a little more undersized centers. Cliff was like six, eight. Shaq was like six, nine. Badunga, six, eight or six, nine. Very athletic, springy players who can get up there, throw down dunks, bring a physical ability to the game, but are still working on refining their game and having touch around the rim and shooting the basketball and some of the little things. Now with Sheck, it didn't work out. There was the awesome first game that he played after his quick NCAA dumb suspension. And he, he threw down like the one dunk in transition. I think it was like a, it did have the hand behind his head or something like that. Um, but that obviously didn't work out with Cliff. You know, it, it, when you have the number two or number three, whatever he was coming in, you expect more than being a, a 16, 17 minute per game guy who averages, you know, seven and five. But he was a pretty good player. Seven points, five rebounds. He's a good shot blocker. Obviously, they didn't have him for the NCAA tournament for other stuff. Uh, obviously, you would have liked to get even more than that or more years out of Cliff Alexander where he could have developed into something more. And that's kind of the common theme there. Both those guys left after freshman. For all we know, if Shaq Diallo or if Cliff Alexander stayed for year two or year three, they might have turned into All-American level bigs in their time at Kansas. Now, will Kansas be afforded that option with Flory Badunga? Maybe not. I don't know. There is some interesting conversation here that I want to get into because it also relates with Hunter Dickinson here um, coming up. But I don't say those names to say, you know, this isn't going to work out. I mean, it, there is a chance that it follows the same path. I'm just saying that that's the type of center he is, but – maybe he's going to end up being a much more productive version of it, right? You keep taking shots at it. Not every freshman recruit is going to come in and hit the ground running, 
But if you have three of them who are all five stars who have similar body types and this and that, maybe one of the three hits. And maybe that means you're due for Flory Bedunga. So a really exciting pickup for KU. I want to get into what this possibly could mean with Hunter Dickinson. And, you know, what is the long term, you know, what is the longevity possibly of Flory Bedunga here? First, though, this episode of Locked on Jayhawks is brought to you by Nutrafol. You don't have to choose between better hair growth and your health. Nutrafol provides a whole body health approach for men that promotes healthier hair. No drugs, no compromises, just better hair. Nutrafol is the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement clinically shown to improve your hair growth, visible thickness, and visible scalp coverage. Take the first step to visibly thicker, healthier hair. For a limited time, Nutrafol is offering our listeners $10 off your first month subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com slash men and enter promo code Locked on college. Find out why over 4,000 healthcare professionals recommend Nutrafol for healthier uh, hair. Nutrafol.com slash men spelled N U T R A F O L dot com slash men and enter promo code Locked on college. That's Nutrafol.com slash men promo code Locked on college. Uh, so tomorrow's episode, like I said, I'm trying to jam pack these in. I took a quick vacation and turns out KU was announcing their stadium plans and uh, Flory Bedunga committed. So we're, we're, we're getting to what we can. And then we'll get some more KU football previews later. Make sure you're subscribed here with Locked on Jayhawks. Um, what does this mean for 2024? That is the class that Flory Bedunga is a part of. Hunter Dickinson can come back for a second year. And that was one thing that I was curious on about, you know, if Flory Bedunga was committing this early in the process. Does that imply that it's not Kansas? because Hunter Dickinson could have the option to come back. And if you're Flory Badunga and you fast forward to next off season and Hunter Dickinson does decide to come back, if your thoughts are, I'm going to be a one and done big man, that gets pretty pushed down a little because, uh Oh, now all of a sudden this guy's coming back. Who's going to play 28 to 32 minutes at the center position. And we go back to the scouting report. He's not somebody who can really shoot the basketball. You're not going to play him at the four. So it's like, Oh, I'm only going to play eight to 12 minutes a game would you really want to commit to that, right? So that made me think that, well, you know, maybe KU would have a better shot if you were committing in the spring or something. Um, so this could tell you a couple things, right? Maybe this tells you that Hunter Dickinson is gone at the end of the year. That's the expectation from the staff, right? Maybe this tells you that the staff told Flory Badunga, yeah, he could come back for another year, but we're expecting him to be gone. Most likely he is going to be gone. And so you're going to be fine if you want to come here. Maybe this is a situation where, you know, Flory Badunga says, this is what's right for me. I'm going to assume he's gone. If he does happen to maybe surprise us a little bit and come back, then I'll do what like Mackenzie and Baco did. You know, Mackenzie and Baco committed to Duke. Then Kyle Filipowski, Mark Mitchell, all these guys decided to come back to Duke for another year. And you said, well, going to be a little tougher to get minutes in the front court. Do you commit? Ask out of my national letter of intent. And then he ends up going to Indiana. Maybe for Flory Badunga, you say, yeah, Kansas is a school. And if Hunter Dickinson's gone, I can come in next year. I'll be the starting center. Boom. Perfect. But if Hunter Dickinson comes back, he says, I'll just ask out of my national letter of intent, reset the recruitment. There'll be a lot of it in the spring, right? That could be a possibility. And maybe that would even something be that Kansas told him that, yeah, if he does decide to come back, we're not expecting it. We'll even help you out through that process because we understand. Then again, maybe from Flory Badunga's perspective, there is more to it than just that. Uh, he gave an interview recently with uh 24 7 sports and he kind of talked about how it was very important to him and his family to get a college degree now and, and that he wants to go to school that sets him up for that i will say that does not mean that don't, don't freak out just yet he's staying for four years at kansas there are a lot of schools that offer programs where it's you know if they leave to go to the nba draft or something pursue professional basketball before their degree is done they will help them get the degree over the course of you know a few years. I had Drew Gooden in one of my online, like, I don't know, it was like a com communications class or something when I was in school. You know, like they can still get their degree while they're gone. So it could just be, do you have a program? Does your school have that sort of thing? Or does that kind of entail that, you know, he would be comfortable being in school for two years or three years? And if that is the case, right, then then maybe you view it as okay, if I come in and Hunter Dickinson's gone, then I can be the starter. But the way I view it, like I'm kind of an undersized center who can't really shoot the ball. What is my draft stock going to be, right? Like if you're Flory Badunga, even though he's the number five rated prospect, we saw Cliff Alexander come in as a top five prospect. And again, the production wasn't great. He, went, he ended up going undrafted. 
So what if for Flory Badunga, he's a top five prospect, but from an NBA potential, he's not being seen as a first round pick. And from that standpoint, what if he is more of a two or three year guy and he has an understanding of that and he goes, well, you know, worst case, if I am behind Hunter Dickinson for a year, my plan is to be in school for two or three years. So it could tell you one of those two things that either Hunter Dickinson, the staff is thinking that he's going to be gone at the end of the year. Or it could tell you that Flory Badunga has plans of being in school longer than maybe just that one year for the one and done. Now, of course, it could be a situation. We just saw UConn do this this past year. Adama Sanogo, if it got to this point where Hunter Dickinson did come back for year two and he had Flory Badunga as his backup, Adama Sanogo is playing 26, 27, 28 minutes game to game, right, for UConn. And he was arguably the best player on the team. Um, won Final Four MOP, all that sort of stuff he was still giving up 12, 13, 14 minutes a game to Donovan Klingon because Klingon was that good. And Klingon ended up coming back this year. And now he's, you know, one of the five or 10 favorites for national player of the year for this year. He's already being picked to be like a top 10 pick in, in 2024 mock drafts. Um, maybe that's the path for Badunga. He says I could follow that path, but if Klingon would have even gone pro after this past year that UConn won the title, he probably still would have been a first round pick, probably like a back end of the first round pick. So there even is a world where if Flory Badunga and Hunter Dickinson coexist, that's still like you could end up being if you're the backup big, but you play that well in those 12 to 13 minutes a game, you could be a first round pick and you could fulfill your dreams if you do want to be a one and done. Because that's something else he did mention in that interview that he wants to get to the NBA. Didn't clarify if it was one and done or not. But I think there's a lot of interesting things you could read into this about the timing of all this and him committing and what it means for that center position. I want to talk with about this uh, means for big picture uh, both in terms of the roster in 2024 and just some other kind of big picture things about why this recruitment could be so important for Kansas and Bill Self here with Locked on Jayhawks. So what this means possibly big picture, right? Obviously, from a roster perspective, you look ahead to 2024 and you say, well, if Hunter Dickinson goes after this one year, okay, great, we have center coverage, a guy you can come in and um, it, it takes a lot of time to learn that center position. So it's not going to be a guarantee you'd come in and start right away, but clearly has the talent to do so. And you're also going to be losing Parker Brown at the end of this year. Zach Clemens could transfer at the end of this year, or he could be back. Um, so you need that center coverage. So you have that. And whether you get one year, multiple years, whatever. Great. Okay. But I think this means a lot more big picture. Um, does this kind of signal that KU is officially back to landing consistent top five guys since the NCAA stuff? The KU recruiting has not really taken a, a huge dip since the NCAA stuff happened. They just won a title two years ago. They've still brought in a bunch of McDonald's All-Americans. They brought in top 20 recruits. They brought in even top 10 recruits with guys like Quentin Grimes. What they have not had, though, since the NCAA stuff is the top three, top five level recruits. This is KU's highest rated recruit, I believe, since Josh Jackson. You look at Andrew Wiggins. You look at Joel Embiid. You look at Josh Jackson. Those guys who are not just one and dones, but are one and dones that are going to have a huge impact on the collegiate level, right? You've had other top 10 recruits. You've had other top 20 recruits, Devon Dotson, near top 20, Zell Marco Jackson. I don't think the NCAA stuff has affected that. What it has affected me is getting those top three to five guys, which you haven't gotten since then. And honestly, in my mind, like when I think of the perfect roster construction nowadays in college basketball, if you can have a couple returning starters, if you can have uh, you know, a couple transfers, if you can have some returning bench players, uh, mix in some freshmen and transfers, and then you bring it like that 2016-2017 Kansas team where you had all those returning starters, you had experienced players, and nowadays maybe the equivalent would be you bring back three starters, bring in one transfer, and then that fifth kind of element is your Josh Jackson type. If that can be what Flory Badunga brings, right? You look to 2024, Dewan Harris could be back for another year. KJ Adams could be back for another year. Um, we'll see what happens with any of the, the current freshmen they have on the roster, right? Or, or any of the current players they have that you can kind of have that as a last piece, as opposed to like, if Andrew Wiggins were added to that 50 or the 16, 17 team, it would have been a lot different than the 13, 14 team where he had to be a leader on the team. If you can make him a supplemental piece, that's a lot of fun. So that's, that's what I think you're ideally going for here. But I think this officially marks KU being back to that level. Again, it's not that different of a level of where they've been recruiting and they've been more than successful enough doing what they're doing now. So it's not a huge deal, 
But it is nice to be able to every now and then be like, yeah, we are going to get that top three or top five guy. And this is the first one in a handful of years, which is obviously possibly representing a big thing for uh, KU. Um, so a very big get for the Jayhawks, obviously. I'm sure we'll have plenty more content on Flory Badunga. Let us know, Flory Flush or Badunga Dunk. All right, uh, we're going to have uh, another episode coming up on the KU Football Stadium renovations released shortly here with Locked On Jayhawks. So you can find our show anywhere you get any of your podcasts. You can find it on our new Locked On website, or you can like and subscribe to the show on our YouTube page. Thanks for joining us tonight, and we'll uh, see you shortly for another episode of LOJ.